Okay everyone, so this one is called the My Clean Buildings Monochrome, one in monochrome, which just means one color and one in color. And um, what I'll do is I'll, like on Monday, I'll have you do it first kind of without saying much, just like how would you do it. And so with the template, which is the um, just a very simple outline, just use that as a, as a little tracing guide and transfer this drawing very lightly with either your colored pencil or maybe just in pencil um, onto a separate piece of paper. Um, so don't use this original, you know, make yourself a new one, very, very light. And, um, and what it's going to be is going to be, of course, here sky. We're going to have road of some kind. Uh, there's going to be grass. These, of course, are trees and trees, and maybe this is some kind of building material. Maybe it's brick, and you know, maybe there's glass here. I'm not sure, but you could also do variations of this. Um, and so, let's just do one in pencil. How would you make a rendering of this scene? Um, uh, in pencil or just a monochromatic pencil, like a brown or a blue. Um, uh, Prisma colors are, you know, softer, so they'll they'll move s more smoothly than a pencil. Um, so just pick either a pencil or soft pencil, HB or softer, and or a regular uh, Prisma color, and use that for this first exercise. And then we'll do it again in color, okay? But for now, just do this for maybe 10, 10 minutes or so. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you what I did when I took the workshop and I'll try to go through the steps, um, you know, like little tips and little rules which, um, you know, like any rule you can break, but it's a good starting point. And, um, and I'll try to do one myself, okay? So what I'll do is first quickly show you my pencil drawing. So it did this thing where you know you would do this sort of before and after thing and when I did mine, which was this one. And I was like, yeah, okay. And we did this without much input and then we did this like twenty minutes later. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna analyze why this is better, you know, simply put than this. Um, and things like Okay, too much detail because bricks are just too small at that scale to be represented. So what do you do? Well, you, you can maybe just show the color of the bricks, right? Uh, also, what this drawing doesn't have is really doesn't have any lighting or rendering of shadow and dark areas and light areas. Um, and in general, it's just not really very inspired. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not, you know, that great either. Um, and in this drawing, oh, in which, by the way, there's a little bit of green and black, so it's actually two colors. Uh, but there are a couple of things that are happening here that are not happening here. And one of the things that I think is really, really important is that the drawing becomes its own thing. So you're not trying to take a picture and, like, represent all the little details. Instead, you're using your stroke as a kind of, like, self, um, how should I say, self-representational thing. You, you you kind of abstract in a way. I mean, it's a naturalistic drawing of something that exists, but the fact that you do all the strokes in one way and you make that mark really meaningful uh, in its own right um, is a kind of abstraction, right? Um, and that's, that's really interesting and in why that is that it works. Um, so what I'll do is I'll try to do one now again, um, but just so that you know, there is a thing, there's like tons of PDF about this stuff in I Learn right now, um, including my original uh, set from that workshop. And what I've tried to do is mark, uh, mark the PDF with little numbers, like here, for example, number six. So if you download the other document that's called uh, Mike Lynn graphic principles and tips. Um, ideally, these little numbered notes refer to those examples in the PDF. So it's uh, uh, with time I'll be able to put them in as, as actual annotations in the PDF. But for now, you just have to kind of go back and forth. Um, so let's see. Just move this. 
So we'll just do one now just with pencil, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to uh, quickly trace it. Um, and again, really, really light. So you're welcome to do one more now as I talk. Um, might be the best thing to do. Uh, you know, just want to get just the outline. So very, very light because I don't want to be stuck with the lines that I draw right away now uh, because then I'm, I'm committed to that. And you know, what if I don't want a line that's like completely marked and completely resolved uh, and you know, completely uniform, etc. So even the trees are just, you know, just, just a general shape, um, just to get a little bit. So once again, what I'm going to ask you to do is to apply these techniques to the drawing of the garden, of the courtyard, okay, when you do that final one. One of the things we talked about is that, you know, if you have a line that's um, for organic things, then that line can be kind of uh, squiggly and also vary it, and if you have a line for um, uh, built things, you know, that can be fairly, fairly straight and uniform, however the thickness can vary still. Okay, so that's one little trick. Um, let me just quickly jump to, I think we did some of these at the very beginning of the class, we went over some of these things, uh, particularly for products, so I'm just gonna, you know, repeat them a little bit, and that is one trick, if you don't know what you do, is to just keep doing something, right? So if I don't know where my cube is going to go here, well, if I can just keep drawing, and then when I kind of figure it out, I kind of keep going. So it's, it's what he calls hit and go, or go and hit. And so that gives you kind of like, you know, buys you time, so to speak, so that when, you, when you're drawing, it's like, oh yeah, okay, I'm here, but what do I do next? Oh, I don't know, but while I keep moving my pencil, I can think about it. Um, Although the trick really is not to think too much, right? Um, and um, let's see. Uh, the other little tricks are like using lines that don't always end up like perfectly with an ending point, but like have a little dot that extends, maybe breaking them up a little bit. Um, I want to get to the trees because that's the fun part. This is just a general uh, quick thing about the fact that if you're going to use light colors, this particularly for markers, if you're going to use light markers, then you're kind of like, you can do crazy stuff. Like this was done taking a bunch of markers and just like going like that and then creating the drawing on top of it. And if you see him doing it, it's like, wow, you know, it's amazing. This is my poor edition of it. Um, so the trees, he has this funny thing. You can have different style trees, of course, but um, with this particular drawing, he talked about little McDonald's for the tops of your trees and little Wendy's for the bottom of your trees, um, which is a kind of neat way to remember. And another thing to remember is that you have um, uh, always the shadow on trees is really below. I mean, that would give it a better rendering because the light is from above. So let me just start putting some of that into the drawing now. What I want to do is actually not, again, commit to my final lines, that is the outlines, because as soon as you do that, it really looks like finished. So you want to do that at the very, very end, and spe especially when you do the color version, okay? So for now, what I'm going to do is try to fill in here and there without worrying about, like, perfect edges, okay? We're going to do those later, and for those, you might even use a little bit of a straight edge. Uh, let's see, we can start anywhere, but let's just say we want to do the trees. So we have a bunch of trees here. Note also that the scale is going to be a little bit strange, because these trees look like trees that maybe are like 10, 15 feet tall, but next to this building, they're more like, I don't know, 20 feet or 30 feet. But that's okay, right? Drawing is fun because you don't have to be realistic. So what I'm going to do is now just, just quickly do... Um, you know, bottom and, and tops of my trees, just a little, again, what he calls McDonald's. Uh, what's hard with the tree is that it's really hard to get away from that stereotype of, you know, that kind of tree. Um, and no matter how you try, because it's organic, it's really hard to do random. Even if I do this, you see what I'm doing? I'm just like going around in a very even way. And so, well, you know, I guess it takes practice to try not to be uh, mechanical, right? So whatever we do, though, I think we're going to be in better shape than before. Um, 
So just keep your kind of pencil moving and for this you probably could use a little bit of a scalpel shaped uh, tip um, pencil so where the shape of your of your lead is like that so that as you rotate it you get a nice you know uneven line okay um, I'm a little contorted here in my seat but uh, okay I made that too big but it doesn't matter okay um, then of course the trunks, well just a little bit of a, uh, you know, maybe a little information there. Um, and now let's say if we, if we wanted to do some shading on these trees, again, you know, you're very far away so it's not like you can do too much details. Uh, but one thing you can do is start putting uh, strokes. And here's the thing, again it's a rule, you can break it, but if you do in fact do, 45 degree angle strokes, you're going to be in pretty good shape for most of the drawing. Um, which is also to say that by keeping your stroke kind of consistent, you give um, unity to your drawing that um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to just make it look like uh, more, how should I say, uh, coherent. I don't know if that's the right word. So, right now I'm just putting strokes at the bottom because I want the dark part to be at the bottom. Okay, it looks very even, uh, maybe too much, but maybe we can go back later. Okay, maybe we add a little layer here. Uh, maybe if I want to do a little darker, I can cross etch it a little bit, although cross etching is a little tricky. Um, okay. Now the building, huh, it's brick. Again, I can't draw every brick, right? Or even like every raw brick. So what we can do is we can uh, just do a little shading. With shading, there is an interesting, again, kind of counterintuitive, sort of like not very logical uh, way of doing it, which is that you would think that because light comes from above, that this part would be lighter and the bottom part would be darker. So you would think that you might want to do shading like that. Well, in fact, what he says is that because you're going to have dark stuff here on the ground line, the best thing is to actually reverse that so that you do your lighting. Um, let's see if I can, yeah. You do your lighting actually fading downwards like this. And what that achieves is to um, then have more contrast with the ground, okay? So it's kind of a flipped relationship. So let's try to do that with our building. Um, and I'm just going to, again, try not to do zigzag. Uh, you see, I'm already breaking the rule, which is bad in this case, because it doesn't look as good, uh, which is the 45 degree rule, but now I'm stuck, so I'm going to leave it alone. And I'm going to fade a little bit. See, what I did was, I, I, my sort of stupid, you know, right brain, which I really is the one with the intellect. Um, is the left. Is the left? Okay. <laughs> was like, oh, okay, I want to make my lines, like, next, you know, parallel to the line of the building, which of course is wrong, because then as soon as you do that, it starts looking like a feature. So now, because this looks a little bit like I'm trying to do the lines of brick, it doesn't look as good as if I was going to do instead my 45 degree, which contrasts with any, any existing line or any existing feature line, which I'm going to do later. So that's much better, right? Um, so I'm going to do a little bit here too, and I'm just going to pretend that even though maybe somewhere around here there's going to be my sun going through the clouds, I'm going to pretend that the front is going to be lighter, so just to give it more contrast. Okay. Um, so maybe this is a different surface, and so how would I do that? Maybe I just leave you know, my shading very, very light. Okay, so we've done the building, and again, we haven't done the final lines. We've done the trees, let's put some grass here and let's do something with the, with the road, with the yellow brick road or whatever there. Um, a very sim a simple way is to just start, you know, with your with your strokes. Uh, by the way, you can also do this, which is fade your drawing towards the edges of the page, 
so that it has this kind of like focus in the middle and the way to do that is simply to just you know vary your strokes so I'm just gonna go like that right now just very very um, very very basic you know I'm not trying to be uh, anything special but just kind of fitting it out um, and I'm going to do the same with the road. And uh, another thing that he says is try not to put like these little blotches that sort of like start looking like what he calls rubby poop. Um, which is don't put a spot like isolated because as soon as you do that you're forced to go back in and try to blend it a little bit. So first do maybe, now in this case again I'm changing the stroke, but in, in this case it's kind of justified. Um, and uh, let's see, I'm just going to do one. Maybe to increase the, again, the darkness of this, I can cross hatch a little bit. Um, and the reason for that is because if you were to keep the same angle, you start filling in like a, like a still life type of drawing, right? And you don't want. Um, in other words, to me and to my cleaner, and I think to a lot of people, unless you're trying to be like photographic, something that looks like this okay it's also very hard to do by the way right it's very hard to fade that correctly and so what it is it's like oh i'm trying to be perfect i'm trying to make that perfect fade it's a little bit like with the markers and yet i see the stroke so it kind of bothers me that it's not like perfect right whereas here well <laughs> I don't worry it being perfect because I know it isn't and I accept right away that it is what it is, which is a bunch of marks, crossing at times, otherwise just kind of very straightforward, very uh, direct. Um, so it's definitely a technique, you know, it's a technique that you can break, you can adapt, but um, I think it's one that's, that's good to have. So maybe I want to... And then if you really have to put something, you know, maybe you do that. You just put little squiggles. Um, now, of course, at some point you might want to put people. The scale, again, here is a lot, but if this is the entrance to the building and maybe your horizon line is here, your people are probably not going to be much, you know, taller than that. Right? Again, keeping, there's going to be a little exercise about uh, using the horizon line to uh, place figures in your drawing. Um, we'll go over that later. Um, okay, so now the sky. So the sky with color is going to be more obvious to do maybe uh, the sun behind. But um, again, you can't draw clouds, right? I mean, it's impossible. You literally cannot. So um, what, you, what do you do? Well. You can draw clouds by drawing the sky behind the clouds. So one thing you can do is, and you can use the building as a contrast plane to those areas. So one thing to remember is if you've already, um, if you've already kind of darkened these areas, um, maybe that's a spot where you want to have some contrast. So maybe that's where you want to keep your clouds. So let's just see how that could work. Um, again, you know, maybe just a little bit, like, it's very, very hard to be random, right? Because clouds are random, but whatever you do, right now I'm just going to say, well, I want some clouds to be here, and I'm going to do 45 again. Okay, so in essence I'm drawing the sky behind the, some of the clouds that I see. And again, I'm going to like, fade out, or fade outwards, rather. I think one really nice thing about something like this is that you really don't even worry about like whether you can draw or not, you just like sort of do it, you know, kind of like automatic. Um, and, you know, maybe I want it a little bit darker there, so I'm just gonna, because I know I'm gonna get that nice contrast which is possible, right? The blue could vary slightly because of the density of the clouds there. Um, and maybe a little bit more here because I get a little more contrast there. All right, so now I'm almost ready to, um, you know, 
I just keep doing these strokes. I'm almost ready to go back in and finish it up with some straight lines. Because um, right now it's still a little bit, um, you know, amorphous, doesn't have quite. Uh, so for that, yeah, you could use a straight line. So of course I'm just going to start with the building uh, and I'm going to use the type of line that we talked about, which is you keep the pencil moving, but also you leave some gaps. You, it's hard to show it now, but I can just describe it, which is I press harder and I press less hard at times, and I maybe overextend my line a little bit. And right there, wow, that building all of a sudden is like, you know, something like glass or, or you know, steel. Um, so I did the same. Um, and maybe I don't do it too much because I want to see what the effect is, you know, later on and I can always go back in. So I'm, I'm leaving my lines um, really opened up, especially in the middle, okay? And I'm, I'm kind of closing them um, at the top. And I'm doing that in such a way that they, that they actually overlap a little bit. Okay, so I keep my pencil kind of going at all times because that gives it a less kind of... Um, oh, I know what happened here. This line is a little odd. I'm going to fix it a little bit. It's a little... my perspective is a little off. And, you know, maybe this central area I had to find a little bit better. You know, maybe there's truly a, a different structure there. Okay, so maybe on the outside a little bit, a little, little bit. Um, and I know my people look a little bit like aliens, but <laughs> we're gonna, there's a little exercise about that too, okay, about doing people. Uh, and now you can actually just almost copy them from uh, existing. So what I'll do now is also give this grass a little bit more of an edge, a little bit more like... So keep turning your pencil, like what I'm doing, I'm constantly like doing this, okay? I'm like rotating my pencil. Um, and, and it's almost done, so maybe even the clouds can be, you know, I light it a little bit more, um, but again, it's hard to do the edges, right? Because as soon as you do edges, it's like, ah, oh, you're kind of stuck to that. Um, okay, you know, maybe even a little bit darker shadows. Maybe play with the trees a little bit more. Maybe the trunks have also a little bit of shadow by doing the right side a little bit darker. Okay, and I'm just going to finish it by adding, because I liked that earlier by adding a second color, which actually you might not even be able to see on the screen. Yeah, very really hardly, but I'm just going to add a little color just to make it not so monochromatic, okay? Just add a little color to the trees, but still using it just as a, as a dark, right? Oh, not as a dark, but as a, as a monochromatic thing. Okay. I don't want to do that to the building, otherwise it's going to look funny. Um, and maybe just finish off with um, just doing this idea of like fading it out, because I think that really makes it um, stronger. So whatever you do, you just kind of go, so even my trees maybe here, I make them a little darker. And again, I just don't worry too much, right? Um, so it's it's uh, sort of like worry less, meaning okay, these are marks and they have a certain logic to them. Um, this is the list result in a way because I, you know, I. I I strayed from that, so what I'm going to do is try to fix it a little bit, just to be much more forceful there. Uh, and the trick too is to leave white, right? Don't fill it up, because as soon as you fill up everything, you're going to kill it. And I'm 
just going to finish now because I want to do the color, but it's not too bad. So in something like this, of course, the fact that you're using a ruler for your sort of, uh, you know, inorganic or what he calls dead things like buildings, uh, gives it a nice contrast. And then at the very end, just add a couple of like really, really dark lines. You could almost use a pen, but that gets uh, tricky. Maybe even another layer there of dark. So, there you go. So now I've done, I've done the mic clean thing. Um, okay, I'm going to stop and we're going to do a color version of this. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. We'll just, you guys have pencil, color pencils. Um, uh, do another quick light trace and let's do one with color.